Clip Champ. <laughs> this is such a bad name for a product. It sounds like something that's definitely going to be laced with malware, or at the very least is for content you wouldn't want your boss seeing. But the reality is, it's actually pretty good. You already have a version of it included in Windows 11. And if you have a Microsoft 365 personal or family subscription, you already have access to it and it will be coming to your Microsoft 365 business or enterprise subscription very soon too. So what is it and why should you be excited about it? Keep watching to find out. For what seems like forever, if you get on a Mac, one of the core capabilities built in is a product called iMovie. And while iMovie isn't the best video editor around by a long way, it's a pretty capable tool if you've got reasonably light needs and it comes free with the system. If you overlook the fact that you've already paid double for the privilege of having an Apple on the back of your laptop screen. For a long time, the same was the case with Windows. Windows Movie Maker originally arrived with the much derided Windows ME. Windows Me? Windows Millennium Edition? Who cares, we all hated it. And it stuck around through Windows XP and Vista. In fact, it stuck around in some form or another until 2014, and was eventually replaced by a video editing feature in Microsoft Photos. Who knew? In the beginning, Windows Movie Maker was a pretty cool tool, but it never achieved the ubiquity of iMovie, and over time, development of these resources seems to have lost pace until video editing was a bit of an afterthought in another app. Thanks for watching. If content like this is useful to you, please do remember to hit that like button. And if you want to see more like this, subscribe to the channel and hit that bell icon so you'll know immediately the next time I release a video. Also, if content like this would be useful to people in your network, please consider sharing it there too. Thanks. So in 2021, as is often the case, Microsoft made an acquisition to have a bit of a reset on this line of its business, buying the web-based video editor ClipChamp. After being introduced as an app in Windows 11, ClipChamp has now made its way to Microsoft 365 personal and family plans and will soon be added to Microsoft 365 Business Standard, Premium and E3 and E5 along with some other SKUs. It seems like from time to time everyone has a need to edit video in some way now. My app of choice is DaVinci Resolve, but I've also edited nearly 100 videos in the past year, so my needs are a little more than the average infrequent user. ClipChamp is there for those infrequent ad hoc needs, but it also has a rich enough set of tools that for many purposes you wouldn't necessarily need anything else. In that regard, it's very similar to iMovie. So let's jump in and take a look at what it can do. So on Windows 11, you can get started with ClipChamp just by opening it from your start menu. So if you open your start menu, if it's not there, you can search for it, but you can open it um, on Windows 11. It's installed by default. And what you're essentially opening is just an app wrapper around the website. So you can see um, you essentially have a login page. You can log in with your Microsoft account, or if you have an existing ClipChamp account, you can sign in with that. But if you go to the website, you see exactly the same sign in page. So all the app is doing is presenting that in a neat way to you. So when you first get onto ClipChamp, what you'll see is a screen that looks like this. And you basically have two options here. You can either create a video or create a video with AI. There are also some other options here. The brand kit one is one you cannot use if you're um, on a basic free plan, but there are templates that you can use as well. So let's just jump in and we're going to create a new video. So you can see as soon as you jump into the create a video screen, if you have any familiarity with video editing software, you can see that it looks very familiar. You've got your screen here where you'll see your video and you've got your timeline down here. So if you want to add videos to your timeline, you see you have this import media option here. You can also drag in items that you have on your computer. And there's actually a nice range of options here. You can browse your local files. You can also pull in stuff directly from OneDrive, Google Drive or Dropbox. And it gives you an option to bring stuff in from your phone. So it actually gives you a QR code that you can then use to bring stuff over from your phone. So what I'm going to do here is browse my files and grab a couple of stock videos that I've used on previous uh, videos here. 
So now I've got those few videos in here, what I'm gonna do is grab one and drag it down to my timeline. So you can see that immediately, uh, this starts to look more like you may be accustomed to with the video editor. Um, there are also some other options around here that I'd like to point out to you. You can change the uh, the size of your video or the, uh, the dimensions of your video so that you're doing it for different platforms. So for example, um, this would be for maybe your long form YouTube content, but if you wanted to make a short or a reel, you would use this nine by 16. If you wanted to post something uh, maybe on um, LinkedIn, I think that one works pretty well there. Um, and if you want something truly cinematic, then you can go out to 21 by nine. But we'll just leave this by 16 by nine for the time being. And I'll grab another video here and I will put that in there. Um, I can add audio if I want. There's a whole bunch of different audio that I can um, add in here, which are free. So. Um, let's try a couple of these out. So we're going to go ahead and drag that onto our timeline. And then if we go back to the beginning and we press play. You can see that we've got that working in there. And then we can go ahead and we can do things like add uh, transitions between our um, different video tracks so if I want to look at how that transition is going to work oh that's one that I need a paid plan for so you you will come across these things where you need a paid plan and it does a very nice job as uh, Microsoft does now with everything of giving you the option of upgrading to a uh, higher tier plan if you want to but let's grab something that we don't need that for so I'm just going to do that uh, that heart um, and I'm going to go ahead and check how this looks and you can see I've got that in there so it's very easy to add in uh, captions and um, transitions and all the different things that I might want to do in here uh, as I go through so maybe I can add some uh, some audio to this see what I can have for free I'm just gonna have a crowd saying Happy New Happy Year. New Year. Add that in and see how that goes. So you can see if I grab another piece of audio, I can actually get myself additional audio tracks. So I'm just gonna throw that in there and let's see how that looks. There we go. This is a bit of a, a dystopian video, but um, it serves for the purposes of showing you how this works. So I could do exactly the same thing with um, with my video tracks as I do with my audio tracks. So if I want to add another video track over the top, say, I can do that just as I would. So this isn't a, a single track editor um, as you may be used to with kind of cheaper um, paid software and some of the other free options that are out there. Some of them are single track. This is a multi-track editor. I, I don't know how many I can add. I can obviously have three video tracks, so um, that gives you more than enough for most things that you'll do. And you can do things like if you want to add your face, for example, over the top of something else, then you can do that there. Um, you can rotate your video around if you wanted to do such a thing. Um, and there are some other options you can do with cropping and flipping it around and so on and so forth. So. If I want to go back and play this, you can see that I can add that in. I can add a, um, a filter um, or a fade, I should say, on this particular. So I'm going to have a slow fade in, a slow fade out. Let's just take a look at that. So you can see I've got that added in there as well. So it is really, really easy to work around this. And there are different filters, there are effects, there um, are color adjustments that you can do. You can see that the number of, of different options that are paid though. You can see this retro one is paid. You get this little um, diamond icon there. So let's just do a vibrant vlogger there. Uh, look at different effects. I can put that one on there. And you can see that immediately we're building up a video that we might want to, um, to use for something. You can change the speed of a clip. Um, 
uh, you can change the color of a clip as well. If we just jump over to record and create, you can see that we have another couple of options here which are kind of interesting. You can screen record and so on and so forth. One of the ones that I think is very interesting here is this text to speech. So if I jump into here, you can see I can add some text here and I'm going to sample Hello. it. This is the text I want turned into speech for my video. And then that seems good, so I'm going to save that to my media. I'm then going to go ahead and drag that into a new track down here. You can see. Hello, this is the text I want turned into speech for my video. So I'm actually going to go ahead and reduce the volume of my music a little bit. And I'm going to reduce the volume of my crowd a little bit. And I'm going to go ahead and play that again. Hello, this is the text I want turned into speech for my video. And there are actually services that are not as good as that of creating text to speech, which charge you quite a lot per month to use. So the fact that that's included for free in here, and while I'm not advocating that people create those kind of weird faceless YouTube videos, which I covered in a, um, a video that I did recently, this one here. Um, if you wanted to do things like that, then that's the technology that's, that's used there, and it can be used for other things like video training and so on and so forth. So you can see that there's a lot of different options here. There's a lot that you can do. You can create text and put that into your timeline. You can put different graphics into your timeline. There's a whole bunch of transitions in there that we've already looked at. So it's a pretty useful video editor. Um, and I'm just gonna go ahead here and I, you can see if I want to export this, I can do uh, 480p, 720p or 1080p. I can't do 4K without the upgrade. Um, but you, you know, I think, um, 1080p is good enough for most things. So let's go ahead and export this. And you can see that what happens is that your video is being exported. And then depending on what you want to do with it, you can create a link to that video, or you can save it locally, or you can save it to one of these locations. So if you wanted to create a video here and upload it directly to YouTube, then you could do that certainly from here. So from my point of view, this is a pretty uh, useful tool. There are paid plans for ClipChat, and I'm unsure how this pricing will play with the inclusion in Microsoft's commercial Microsoft 365 plans. The Microsoft support article on this isn't too helpful, as it suggests you can upgrade ClipChamp to a paid plan, but there are some premium features that are already included if you have a paid Microsoft 365 personal or family plan. It would be highly unusual for a core Microsoft 365 business or enterprise service to license itself elsewhere than the admin center. And I don't think exactly how this is gonna work has been communicated with, but there is a clear walkthrough of how to approach this for personal and family customers. Frankly, for the vast majority of purposes, what you get for free is probably enough. If you're in a situation where you truly care about features like exporting to 4K rather than 1080p, then you might be in a category where your needs would be better served by a solution like DaVinci Resolve, which for many is free too, anyway. Unlike a lot of online video tools, ClipChamp doesn't watermark your free produced content unless you use premium features, and content ownership is covered in the way we've come to expect from anything connected with Microsoft 365. You own your content, no ifs or buts. Those two aspects alone should make ClipChamp deserving of your attention if you're in the online video editing market. The other day I had a video project where I wanted to use an animated GIF. GIF? This is the video of confused pronunciations. And while I love using DaVinci Resolve, there are some places it's quite limited and dropping an animated whatever they are called into your project is one of them. ClipChamp just took them like a champ. I threw them onto the timeline and in a couple of minutes I had a nicely encoded MP4 that DaVinci was happy to work with. Now there are lots of other ways I could have approached this, but given that I was working on a fairly fresh install of Windows where some of the weirder tools I sometimes use hadn't been installed, ClipChamp was there and waiting for some action. This is exactly the reason why having a video editor that's just there makes so much sense. You don't always know when a weird project is gonna turn up and it's frustrating to have to spend your time finding a tool 
or worse yet, remembering the right tool to go download, install, and then tackle it. Will I be using Clipchamp every day? No. My workflow works for me, and I'm not looking for a new video editor. But had this been so readily available a year ago when I started my YouTube journey, I think I would have seriously tried it. Based on my testing so far, the majority of what I do for YouTube could be easily done here. If you're just starting with video or your requirements are light, this is the right tool. Just as for anyone in that situation using a Mac, I'd point them to try iMovie before trying anything else. Have you used Clipchamp? Does it meet your needs or have you moved on to something else? Let me know what you think down in the comments. Thanks so much for watching through to the end. I'll be back with more information on awfully named products, along with videos on the ones with good names too. Until the next video, bye bye.